I want to talk today about foods that boost brain power. I've talked in past videos about supplements that are known to or that are thought to actually increase brain efficiency, cognition, thinking, memory, that type of thing. I've also talked about a couple of smart drugs. Now I'm going to talk about some actual foods that also are very good for your brain. You've probably heard over the years that a fish being referred to as brain food. And there's actually a physio physiological reason for it, it turns out. Fish, as well as most of, even with people with a rudimentary knowledge of nutrition know, fish <clears throat> is the uh, best natural source of omega-3 fatty acids, particularly fatty fish, such as salmon, trout, sardines, mackerel. Uh, herring is a particularly good source of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, these omega-3 fatty acids are very important for your brain uh, because 60% of your brain is actually made of fat. When somebody calls you a fathead, don't take it personal because we're all fatheads. <laughs> most, of the, most of the bulk of the brain is composed of fat. <coughs> and it's with, excuse me, and it's what they call polyunsaturated fat, mainly omega-3. In fact, uh, half of the fat in the brain is composed of omega-3 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids, especially DHA, DHA, not to be confused with DHEA, DHA is essential for the maintenance and building of neurons. Neurons are basically another word for brain cells in the brain. Studies indicate a need for supplementation of B12 and, and, and omega-3 fatty acids to reduce the risk of cognitive decline. Uh, now, uh, the B12 is there mainly because B12 helps to neutralize uh, the buildup of a toxic byproduct of the amino acid methionine called homocysteine, which is known to basically attack uh, neurons in the brain and can cause brain degeneration. Uh, and the omega-3 fatty acids, of course, is needed because the brain is uh, mostly fat. As I said, various studies show that omega-3 fatty acids help to prevent Alzheimer's disease. <coughs> Excuse me. More than a dozen e epidemiological studies have reported that reduced levels or intake of omega-3 fatty acids or fish consumption is associated with increased risk of age-related cognitive decline or dementia, such as Alzheimer's disease. Now, there's something to consider here. This is an important point. Three studies suggest that the apo, apo, apolipoprotein E4 genotype, also known as APOE4 genotype, limits protection. What this means in simple language is uh, if you have the genetics for the production of, uh, uh, let's say, two copies uh, of, a ge of a protein called ApoE4, uh, taking fish oil is not going to really get into the brain enough to help you uh, uh, as a preventative against uh, Alzheimer's disease. Uh, you know, uh, however, in fact, having two copies of e ApoE4, uh, according to medical studies, increases the risk of Alzheimer's by as much as 80%, which, uh, let me explain that, Having these, uh, this genetic pattern doesn't mean that you're uh, going to get Alzheimer's, but it means that you're at greater risk for Alzheimer's. But the good news is that there are certain forms of uh, omega-3 that are compounded with, with phospholipids. The phospholipids somehow get the omega-3 into the brain enough to offer protection against Alzheimer's, and it overcomes the ApoE4 limitation. Specifically, what type of fish oil I'm talking about? Krill oil. Krill oil basically is, is, uh, is omega-3 combined with phospholipids. It can get into the brain a lot easier than regular fish oil, and, uh, and it can protect the brain more than regular fish oil, especially if you have the genetics for the apple E4, two, you know, two genes for apple E4. If you don't, then regular fish oil is, is sufficient. You know, but who knows? Unless you have genetic testing, you don't know whether you have the genes for apple lip or E4, two copies, I should say. There's one called apple e, uh, E2, where if you have two copies of that, you never get Alzheimer's disease. It's completely protective. I think something like 10% of the population has that. Uh, two copies of the Apple E2, they just don't get Alzheimer's disease. It offers some sort of protective effect. DHA is also protective against several risk factors for dementia, including head trauma. Uh, in recent years, they've discovered that any type of head trauma can induce damage that can lead to uh, uh, dementia. You've probably heard of fighters who, uh, you know, boxers, after their careers, they get something called pugilistica dementia, also known as the punch drunk syndrome, which looks exactly like Alzheimer's. And if you look at their brain cells, they suffer the same type of damage, which is basically destruction of neurons 
an increase of beta amyloid proteins and tau proteins in the brain. Uh, and that could cause by head trauma, you know, uh, getting hit a lot in the head, uh, playing football where you crash your head into things, even soccer where you slam, you slam the soccer ball into your head over and over again. All of, the, all of these things have a cumulative effect where later in life you'll probably have some form of dementia. And now you know why, because basically it causes brain damage. Subtle, but it causes it. Diabetes, uh, DHA also protects against uh, diabetics have something like three times greater risk of uh, dementia, Alzheimer's disease, DHA. If you get in the brain, it protects against that effect of uh, you know having diabetes increasing the risk for uh, Alzheimer's. DHA will protect against that. It also protects against the cardiovascular effects, uh, the generative effects in the brain. DHA is specifically protective against Alzheimer's disease through additional mechanisms. It limits the production and accumulation of the amyloid beta protein toxin that is widely believed to drive the disease and also suppresses several signal transdu transduction pathways induced by alpha, <laughs> alpha beta uh, I'm laughing because it's kind of technical. Alpha beta amyloid, including two major kinases that phosphorylate the microtubule associated protein tau and promote neurofibrillary tangle pathology. Uh, I should, let me explain <laughs> before everybody starts to curse at me for uh, talking too much technical stuff. Alzheimer's is uh, usually uh, uh, characterized by the accumulation of, of two types of abnormal protein in the brain. One of them is called beta amyloid, specifically beta amyloid 42. These are, uh, this is kind of an unfolded protein. I'm not going to go into the uh, technical aspects of pro folded proteins, but let's put it this way. Uh, beta amyloid 42 is an abnormal protein that accumul accumulates in the brain, and it in interferes with neuronal uh, uh, plasticity or transmission of nerve cells. Uh, the other one is called tau. Uh, tau normally has a protective effect, but when it gets phosphorylated, meaning when it, when it combines with phosphorus, now you have phosphorylated tau. And that can cause what they call neurofibrillary tangles, which is, which is the second characteristic of Alzheimer's disease. And uh, that, again, is caused by the accumulation of phosphorylated tau. And uh, it turns out that uh, the omega-3 fatty acids can help prevent that also. Uh, also, curcumin, which I'll discuss later, curcumin is uh, pretty effective at preventing the phosphorylated tau formation. It prevents the phosphorylation of tau. In other words, it prevents the... Uh, addition of phosphorus to tau, which causes the neurofibrillary tangles. Not consuming sufficient omega-3 is linked to learning impairments such as attention deficit disorder in children. Uh, I believe myself, uh, I, I believe I had that as a child. They didn't have a name for it back then. It wasn't a recognized entity, but I was very restless. I couldn't pay attention. Uh, I was very, very bored with school. Uh, it seemed to be going at a very slow pace. I took the whole thing as a joke. And when I look at all the symptoms I had, when I read about attention deficit disorder, I realized that this is what I had. And I also realized why. Because I was completely and utterly deficient in omega-3 fatty acids. I consumed no fish. There was I don't believe that the only fish oil they had back then was cod liver oil. And I never took it. Uh, my, my diet as a child was absolutely atrocious. My mother, and I'm not trying to put it down, she knew absolutely nothing about nutrition. Uh, up until I was eight years of age, you're not going to believe what I'm about to tell you, but up until about eight years of age, my typical breakfast was a was a, a donut and a cup of coffee. This is a child growing up, and you wonder why I had what they call learning deficits. It's amazing that I, I was able to have a functioning brain at all, but I did have. A, uh, I realize now I had a complete omega-3 deficiency. And I also believe that if you know any children that have attention deficit, attention deficit disorder or adults who have it, I, I believe omega-3 could go a long way towards uh, curing that and, uh, or lessening it at least. Uh, the, uh, a, a lot of uh, psychiatrists believe that um, if you look at the list of the, the uh, best-selling drugs, antidepressants are always in the top three. And, I, and uh, a lot of psychiatrists believe the reason for that it's because a lot of people are walking around the, uh, who are deficient in omega-3 fatty acids, the preformed kind, DHA and EPA, not the ALA found in vegetables and, and, and whole wheat and all that stuff. That has to be converted, alpha-linoleic acid has to be converted into the active forms, which is DHA and EPA, and you're only capable of converting up to only about 10% of ALA into, e, into EPA and only about 2% into DHA. So there's a lot of people walking around who are kind of deficient in um, 
and omega-3 fatty acids, and this definitely affects the brain. And one of the first, uh, one of the primary signs of that is depression. And I'm not saying all depression is caused by omega-3 fatty acids, but let me put it this way. H having too little omega-3 fatty acids in the diet without question predisposes you to having depression. In other words, the depression be can be caused by certain life events, uh, job loss, divorce, whatever. But in other words, the a lack of omega-3 sets you up for really heavy depression. What does it mean in practical terms if you had enough omega-3, if you did encounter some sort of uh, activity or whatever, event that can cause depression, the, uh, the depression that does ensue will be much lighter and easier to handle uh, if you're replete in omega-3 in the brain than if you aren't. Their, uh, um, dietary consumption of baked or broiled fish is related to a larger gray matter, that made the bulk of the brain, besides the fat in the brain, the rest of the brain is composed of what they call gray matter. This is basically neurons. And uh, they found that uh, studies show that daily consumption of baked or broiled fish is related to larger gray matter volumes independent of omega-3 fatty acid content. This does not happen with fried fish. The fried fish destroys the protective factors in fish that offer this type of gray matter protection. And by the way, a long-standing deficiency of vitamin B12 also causes uh, gray matter to almost to disappear shockingly. I mean, I've, I've seen the, uh, the uh, brain scans of people with B12 deficiencies, and it's amazing that they can even talk. Their gray matter is shrunk down to nothing. Instead, they have a whole bunch of, of what they call white matter intensities. Uh, and this is from a long-standing B12 deficiency. So B12 and, uh, and omega-3 are, are very, very important for your brain. Surprisingly, something else that's good for the brain, this is going to be good news for a lot of people, is coffee. Coffee is good for brain health because of its caffeine content and because it's rich in a number of antioxidant compounds such as chlorogenic acid, number of uh, polyphenols which serve as anti antioxidants. Coffee produces, uh, everybody drinks coffee because they want the alertness and the focus. That's caused because co coffee uh, basically blocks the uh, chemical in the brain called adenosine, which is a, uh, a calming chemical that helps you fall asleep. It also you know, makes you go into kind of a brain fog. It decreases alertness. Coffee basically blocks adenosine receptors, and by that, by doing so, it increases alertness. It makes you feel more energetic. Coffee uh, also increases the uh, release of serotonin, which is a calming uh, neurotransmitter. It also helps you fall asleep, but uh, in, in certain, uh, uh, having a certain amount of it uh, d decreases depression, makes you feel better. Uh, so, and the net effect of all this is that when you drink coffee, your ability to focus and concentrate increases. As I've said in past videos, if you have a problem with anxiety from drinking coffee, and by the way, the recommended dose for health for coffee is four cups a day. That's the optimum amount for health. However, if you drink that much, uh, uh, you uh, uh, and you get jittery or anxiety, that type of thing, uh, if you ingest uh, 100 to 200 milligrams of the amino acid L-theanine, it'll basically smooth out those feelings so you won't get the alertness. There are some people, because of genetic uh, polymorphisms, they're called, where they basically uh, metabolize caffeine in the liver a little slower than normal. And because of this, the caffeine tends to build up and cause a, li a bit of toxicity. And usually it's, you know, the nervousness and the jitterous. You'll know if you have this, because even if you drink one cup of coffee, you'll notice that you get a little bit too jittery, a little bit too much anxiety. That means you likely have this genetic pattern. In that case, you want to keep the, the uh, you know, the coffee, uh, keep the caffeine down. Don't eat a lot of it. Uh, li lifelong coffee or ca caffeine consumption has been associated with prevention of cognitive decline and a reduced risk of developing stroke, Parkinson's disease, and Alzheimer's. I believe it's, uh, it uh, has a 40, per uh, de decreases the risk of Alzheimer's by about 40%, if I recall correctly. Its consumption does not seem to influence the occurrence of seizures, which is good. Uh, another good brain food, which uh, is uh, bl blueberries. Blueberries and other deeply colored berries, or the blue ones, contain anth anthocyanins, which is a group of plant compounds with anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. Animal studies have shown that blueberries can help improve memory and may even delay short-term memory loss. Uh, I, I recall reading animal studies where they gave blueberry extract, I believe it's the rats or mice, I can't remember, but it basically regenerated their brain to the extent where the equivalent of uh, rats that are equivalent of 60-year-old humans, 
and reverted their brains to the equivalent of 19 year old teenager. In other words, they're eating blueberries. And if this happened in a human, if you're 60, 65, eating blueberries regularly will will regenerate your brain so that your brain works like more like a 19 year old than a 65 year old. Now, I hasten to add, <laughs> they haven't proven that in humans yet. It's shown even shown in animals, but still, I think that's a damn good reason to include blueberries about a cup a day or more. I use blueberries in my protein drink. I think it's it's one of the healthiest things you can eat. Another good brain fruit is, is uh, turmeric. The active ingredient in turmeric is called curcumin. Turmeric has been shown to cross the blood brain bar blood brain barrier. This is a network of blood vessels that prevents the entry into the brain of toxic substances. But certain uh, uh, curcumin can actually uh, cross the blood brain barrier because if you can't get in, if you can't get through the blood brain barrier, it doesn't get into the brain. It's useless. Uh, most forms of uh, certain nutrients um, don't, you know, get into the blood, but they can't get into the brain, including a lot of forms of choline uh, that uh, people eat to uh, increase brain power. Most of it does not get past the blood blood brain barrier, but one does, which I'll talk about in a minute. Anyway, uh, uh, by getting through the brain, uh, blood brain barrier, tur curcumin uh, it can directly enter the brain and benefit the cells there. Some studies show that curcumin can pr both prevent and remove the accumulation of toxic proteins in the brain that cause brain degeneration. By boosting dopamine and serotonin in the brain, curcumin can elevate mood and relieve depression. Curcumin also boosts levels of brain-derived neurotropic factor which is basically kind of a, it's a protein, which some scientists refer to as fertilizer for the brain because it increases uh, the number of uh, neurons and also the synaptic connections between neurons, which allow the neurons to communicate with each other. So uh, to, uh, curcumin is, uh, uh, and then there's some initial studies that show that uh, curcumin can actually remove uh, beta amyloid and tau that accumulates a brain, that accumulates in the brain and which causes Alzheimer's disease. Uh, one animal study showed that a combination of DHA, curcumin, and, and uh, green tea, the amount of green tea was 1,300 to 1,600 milligrams a day. This is an animal study. It showed those three uh, 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 nutrients, green tea, curcumin, and, and uh, DHA, get this, completely prevented. These were uh, rodents that were specifically bred to get the equivalent of human Alzheimer's disease. By giving those three nutrients, it, uh, it completely blocked the uh, the onset of Alzheimer's disease in these animals. And remember, these animals were bred where they were basically bound to get out a form of Alzheimer's disease. They were basically set up for it. Taking these three nutrients completely prevented it. Will it do the same in humans? I don't know. But judging by the effect of what I've already discussed about, you know, the omega-3 fatty acids, curcumin, and green and green tea, which I didn't discuss, it's it's the theoretically possible that these nutrients have at least a uh, very good effect towards the prevention of brain degeneration in humans. Broccoli bro broccoli is a brain food because it contains vitamin K. Vitamin K is essential for the formation of spindolipids, which is a type of fat that's dens densely packed into brain cells. Again, it's one of the solid matter of the brain that helps the brain cells or neurons work better. So basically, you know, by getting vitamin K from broccoli, those type of vegetables, you're also improving brain health. The uh, isocyanates uh, and uh, sulforaphane that's found in bro uh, broccoli is also very good for protecting the blood vessels of the brain because it helps to increase nitric oxide, which uh, is very protective for blood, uh, blood vessels in the brain. One of the reasons why people uh, get memory deficits and brain degeneration diseases it's because of a lack of proper blood circulation in the brain. So anything that's going to keep your blood vessels healthy. In fact, some neuroscientists uh, use an adage. They, they say that if you want to see know how your brain's going to work, look at your cardiovascular system. The better your cardiovascular system, the better your brain's going to work as you age. Keep that in mind. Another uh, good brain food is dark chocolate. It's, it can, again, it contains various antioxidants that have been shown to boost memory in older adults. Uh, you don't want to be careful, though. Don't eat a lot of dark chocolate that contains sugar because uh, the sugar is, is very bad for the brain. Eggs are, are, are a good brain food because of the choline content that it contains and other nutrients. Interestingly, uh, choline is needed for the production of a brain neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which is thought to be the primary neurotransmitter in the, uh, in the part of the brain called the hippocampus. 
which is considered one of the seed of learning of me and memory in the brain. So it's very important for memory and learning acetylcholine, and, and uh, choline determines the production of acetylcholine. Uh, now, remember that uh, 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 eggs, the type of uh, choline that's found in eggs is called phosphatidylcholine. Another more familiar name is lethis, lecithin. And this is the point I was just going to uh, talk about before I started stuttering, is that this particular form of choline, phosphatidylcholine, is, is the form of choline that most freely enters the brain. Of all the types of choline, two other types of choline that also can enter the brain are alpha-GPC, and the other one is called cinecholine. Uh, those three are the only types of choline that can get through the blood-brain barrier. But of the three, if you're really looking at a health, uh, uh, from a health point of view, a recent study just came out the other day showing that phosphatidylcholine is the only form of choline does, that does not increase the production of TAMO. TMAO is a, uh, it's a metabolite of uh, choline and, uh, and also carnitine found in meat and fish and other foods. Uh, it's transformed uh, uh, the intestinal bacteria and certain enzymes in the liver transform uh, choline and carnitine into this TM TMAO. Uh, and the TMAO is, is, is associated with the onset of diabetes and heart disease. Although that's kind of sketchy. I've talked about that in my Applied Metabolics newsletter. But the point being that it's interesting that this one form of, the most natural form of choline, phosphatidylcholine, is the only choline that is not converted in the body into, T, into TAMO. So uh, in, case, in case you're wondering, each egg yolk, egg yolk contains 112 milligrams of choline, while the white contains zero. So if you throw away the uh, egg yolks, you don't eat the whites, you're not getting any choline at all, you're not getting any brain benefits. So that's about it. I just want to talk about a couple of interesting foods, which, uh, you know, that's a big uh, interest of mine, in increasing brain health cognition, because I want to maintain my brain as long as possible. I don't want to, to me, the worst thing on earth is to lose your thinking ability, your, your uh, ability to process, and, you know, when your brain goes, it's all over. <laughs> so yeah, this is a particular interest of mine. If you want to have it, more information on nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, ergogenic aids, anti-aging research you can use today, fat loss techniques that really work, women's health and fitness, supplement science, <clears throat> subscribe to the main, today to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. Uh, each, each month it's 40 to 50 pages, no ads, pure evidence-based information, including information based on my 57 years of constant study and empirical learning, including in the gym. I've been in the trenches. I know what works and what doesn't work. If you join my, uh, if you subscribe my to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, I'll send you an invitation to join my uh, private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I uh, post new information on exercise, nutrition, general health, and medicine. Uh, I also have an email portal, my Applied Metabolics uh, uh, um, I, 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 my Applied Metabolics website, where uh, current subscribers only can send me uh, short questions about anything they might have read and uh, or, or uh, any questions they have, short questions, I'll be happy to answer. And, uh, uh, and uh, you're welcome to leave comments. Hey, look. Uh oh, you can hear my heart beating. Look at this. What the hell's going on here? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <the laughs> I had to throw that in. Anyway, the, uh, so subscribe today, uh, uh, and uh, you can. Like I was going to say, you can leave comments under this video. Any uh, any future videos you want me to do, if I think enough uh, people are interested, I'll I'll try and do the video. Uh, uh, and uh, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter and adopt a dog. Take care. Here, my pecs are waving goodbyes. Here, my pecs. All right, bye bye.